Yeah, I think hoaxes are indeed part of the phenomenon in that they keep it a mystery. That is, it's always possible to say, oh, I know this that was done by somebody, they're all done by somebody. And see, so people who don't particularly want to think about it have an easy way out. And that every phenomenon should allow that. So people don't, it shouldn't be so challenging that you can't avoid it. If you want to avoid it, you can say, oh, I know it's a hoax and get off the subject. I accept that hoaxes exist. I don't believe every single thing that appears in the field is a genuine thing. But a hoaxing doesn't explain the phenomena. If hoaxing offered an answer to what goes on in our fields, year in, year out, then OK. But it doesn't. Um, these things are happening all over the world. They're happening all over Britain. They've been happening for what? since the late 60s, early 70s. They've been documented since the 70s. You know, you're talking 30 years. These, these, these guys were kids. Who was doing them then? We've been having formations for 10 years. Are you telling me that people are, every summer, for 10 years, have been going out night after night after night creating formations? I mean, it doesn't make any sense, does it? Oh, why do they practice? Where do they practice? Where's the practice one? Are you, you know, they don't practice. There's never a half-finished one. No mistakes. You know, I, I mean, it just doesn't... That doesn't make sense. And how do they get away with it? How are they not caught? How have they done it? If anyone said they'd done it, I'd be very interested to know... Uh, very interested to know how it was done. Because I can't, at the moment, see any uh, way in which this can be done physically by the old stomping out teams. And when you get the real masterpieces, the hoaxes sort of fall away and they just stand back in admiration like everybody else. And these masterpieces, they're, 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 there's never a blunder in them. Now, something incredibly ambitious and very elaborate. And you, you won't find any stupid mistake in them. In this unforgiving medium, if you fall over in that wheat crop, the wheat's not going to stand up again easily. Saying that people have been going out for years and years, all over the country, all over the world. I mean, how many people are we talking about? And what kind of an obsession have they got? You know, I mean, they go out in rain, they go out, you know, in all weathers, in crops like oilseed rape, which stinks, covers you in yellow. It's a horrible crop to be in. The lack of being caught, the lack of blunders, the lack of... Uh, you don't see a half-finished masterpiece. As a cock crows, everyone has to pack up tools. It's, uh, they give, all give the impression of being done in one go. They're not spot-on accurate, but they've got a rhythm through them, like an artist would do. In 1996, we had the Julius set appear very close to Stonehenge. Now, my friend Rod Taylor, who was a pilot, was flying with a friend from Exeter back to Thruxton, which is where we are now. And uh, they circled around Stonehenge, and my friend Rod Taylor was taking photographs of the pilot. Well, they left Stonehenge, came here, Rod got out pilot got back in after being refuelled and flew back down towards Exeter and then noticed this formation next door to Stonehenge. Now, they sort of worked it out, the time lapse between when they were there to get here, refuelled, back in the plane, back was about 25 minutes. And they swear blind that that formation was not there when they were circling around Stonehenge at the time. So we got a 25 minute gap where 140 circles appeared at Stonehenge, rather mysteriously, and really we haven't got to the bottom of that one yet. This is indeed the queue to the, uh, right the way up to this crop circle, it's absolutely extraordinary. Stonehenge is just there. 
and the crop circle is on the left hand side and here's the sign come see Europe's best crop circle the farmer has decided to open his field yesterday I spoke to him and he was uh, wanting to keep people out and was very angry about its uh, arrival now it would appear that he's thought things through and can see that uh, he's able to compensate for the damage by charging three pounds a head to enter and now we have this uh, problem. Thanks a lot. That went to the dirt without being seen. So how many people do you reckon you've had here today? I reckon about two, three hundred probably. Uh-huh. And I guess you're seeing people from all, all, all kinds of parts of the world? Yeah, we've had uh, American friends, Dutch family, Australia. What, what's your own opinion on, on what it is that we have here? Do you, do you have a view? I can't see anybody doing that, any human person doing that, um, variety of reasons. It's quite a public place where we are. Yeah. To be able to do it without being seen. Uh, I think it's nice we have one or two mysteries left in life that people can't sort of come up sure. and out of war and it is nice. Sure. So what you got so far, Richard? This one that you asked me to have a look at. Right, oh right. That one, in fact, when you line up the centre with that and that, they're exactly in line. Thanks, Laura. Um, with the compass bearing, you know, we've been talking about the central circle and the open end uh, cutting either side of Stonehenge. Have you been able to look at that or confirm that? Do you have a compass yourself? Is that yes, yeah, I can confirm that. That might be... I've got fairly accurate. That would be a good thing to do, I think. My, my compass shows from the centre of this circle to the right hand side of the stones is zero degrees right and the open end which is here to the left hand side of the stones is zero the degrees the centre of the circle again yes centre right so we're in the open end of the tail right now but as I bring it back I can see it there it is set on zero there we got it zero okay hi welcome back everybody um so William was just saying that uh, what what you just saw there, why don't you share with them? Well, you know, it's interesting that many of the times the formations are put in such a way that certain aspects, certain lines that the formation makes line up with some sacred site down the landscape. Like in this instance, uh, if you took that sort of um, curved form right. of the formation, the right. Julia set, and you went from the center of one circle through the center of another one, you got right completely e exactly um, uh, on the edge of, of one side of Stonehenge and then other circles lined up on the other side of Stonehenge. So the, the, they're placed in such a way to take into account things that are in the entire surrounding topography. Okay. Wow. So oftentimes you'll be sitting in a formation and say some line in it will be facing towards a certain direction and then you'll look down that direction and there's an ancient monument. So is it line. like a ley line that it's on? Well, Would kind you of. you call it like a ley line? Many of these ancient monuments were put on ley lines. Mm -hmm. So there is definitely a relationship between ley lines and the, and the and formations. And the crop circles, Oh, absolutely. 